Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about quick and easy ways of applying lookups in Power Query. Now, recently I was working on a consulting assignment, which is where I had to enrich the dimension tables with a couple of extra columns that had to come from a few broken tables. Now, one way of applying the VLOOKUP in Power Query is by applying a merge and then opening up the column that you need. But I thought, is there a way that I can apply a quick and easy lookup and get the data that I want? In this video, I'm exactly going to speak about that particular technique. No further ado. Let's begin. All right, I'm in Power Query and that's where I have created some very simple data, just two columns. First is the product, the second one is the delivery date. Now, maybe I don't really want to have the day, I want to have the day and name. And one of the ways to do that is by applying a merge. So you can create another table which contains the day number and the day name and apply a merge between the two tables and then open it up in this particular table. That is going to get the job done. The other way to do that is by writing an if function, but that's going to be a long if function. Let's just explore that if there is a third simpler way out by just writing a very simple lookup function, right? So this problem, I'm going to solve it in two part approaches. Part number one is that I would need to have a list, which is where I'm going to make a search. And the second is that what item am I looking for? Let me just help you with a little bit of diagram here. The first thing that I would need is all the names as a list. So I'm going to write Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday, right? A seven uh, item list. Now in this particular seven item list, I just want to pull up the relevant record depending upon what the day number is. So if the day number is six, I just want to pull up the sixth record right here. If the day number is five, I want to pull up the fifth record right here. So if I actually have these two parts like a list and the day number, which is what I already have, I'm going to be able to solve this problem pretty easy. So why don't we actually go to the add columns tab and create a custom column and let's just start it from there. So custom column, I'm just going to call this column as day and start to write my list first. So I'm going to put the curly brackets in the curly brackets. I'll paste all my days. I had copied that before I started the video. I'm going to close the bracket. Now this actually forms a list, anything in curly brackets. If I commit to the formula as of now, it's actually going to give me a list against every single row right here, which contains the seven days that I spoke about Monday up until Sunday. Now from that particular list, I want a particular number of items. So I want the maybe the fifth item, the sixth item, the seventh item, whatever item that, that I need. And the item number is nothing but the delivery day. So if I actually extract sixth item from this particular day, I have extracted Saturday. If I extract fifth item from this particular list, I have extracted Friday. Simple enough. So I'm actually going to go back to that particular uh, list that I have created. And from this list, I want to extract a particular row number. How do I do that? I start a curly bracket. And in that curly bracket, if I happen to write the row number, I would have extracted that particular item. So uh, curly bracket, what is my row number? My row number is nothing but my delivery day. Put the delivery day in square brackets because that is a column and the curly bracket is now closed. Say, okay, and what do we have? We have six for Sunday, five for Saturday, but that's incorrect because the order in which Power Query evaluates the counting starts with zero and not with one. That means this is actually delayed. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come back to my um, list right here that I have created and say that because your counting is starting from a zero, why don't you actually do a minus one here? And this is actually all going to be all fine. That means this item is the zeroth item, the first item, the second item, the third item, fourth item, fifth item, and the sixth item. So far so good. Say okay. And now we have the correct days extracted. So six stands for Saturday, five stands for Friday, so on and so forth. Now using this particular very simple list and position item technique, we have been able to mitigate like all the merge that we had to apply and then open up the column and uh, just get the job done. All right, I'm in Power Query again, and let's just discuss a slightly more tricky example, which is where I'm gonna use the same approach of applying a lookup, but not using a merge. Take a look at these two tables that I have. We have an employee table with just three records, two, four, and six. And for these employees, I have to find their leave count. Now, if I have to find the leave count, the leave count resides in the leaves table, which is where I have all the employees and one of the column is the leave count. Now, that is a classic example of a VLOOKUP. Now, you could do that using a merge, but let's just see if we have to do that using my technique, how do we actually do that? Essentially, what I'm trying to do is I'm actually trying to find employee number two in this particular leaves table and then grab the second column of the data, which is nothing but a very straightforward lookup. The first thing that I would need is uh, I would just, again, divide the whole thing into two part logic. The first part is going to be the list and which item do I want in that particular list? 
Let's just start by creating a new column. So I'm just going to go to the add columns tab and start to create a column. So I'm just going to call this as leaf count. And for now, I'm just going to grab the entire table, which is nothing but the leaves table. So I'm just going to say leaves and say, OK, let's just see what do we get. I am going to get the entire leaves table in every single row of uh, the data here. And if I preview that table, the all the two columns are right here. In this particular table, what I need is two things. I would need to have this particular list, which is the employee ID column. In this particular list, I will match the position of employee number two against the current employee that I have, and then find the uh, corresponding uh, leave count data in this particular list. So here, the record number is zero, and I would want the zeroth record of this particular list. So I have to play with two lists. The first list is the employee ID list to find the position number and then find that relevant position in the leave count list. So what we actually do is we actually revise our function right here and start to write a slightly more dense function. So I'm just going to say let and I'm going to say leave list, L-E-A-V-E-L-I-S-T. Uh, and I am going to say leave stable, which is nothing but this particular table. And the list that I have in this particular table or the column that I'm trying to extract is the leave count column, L-E-A-V-E-C-O-U-N-T. All right. Now, this particular uh, first part of the step is going to give me a single column list which will have all the leaves right here. Now, from this particular column, I need to extract the position number. And position number of what? Of the relevant employee that I have. So, the next thing that I'm going to create is nothing but a position number and I am going to write uh, something like um, list dot position of uh, list dot position of is a function that can actually tell you the numeric position or the serial number of any particular item in a list. So I'm going to say that hey my list is nothing but this particular list and in this particular list at the moment when I'm in the first row I'm trying to extract the position number of employee number two. What is the position of that, right? So I'm going to say, hey, uh, this is my uh, table, but uh, not the leave count column, the employee ID column. So EM, all caps, EMP ID, uh, close the bracket. Uh, and in this particular list, I am trying to extract my employee ID, which is nothing but this particular column. And I'll just close the bracket. And I am just going to maybe go to the next step, say in. And I am going to say, uh, hey, uh, first of all, I'll give me the leave list and you write the list and then in curly brackets, you write the position number. So what is my position number? The variable that I have created, which is position number, right? Close that, close that. I think this is good to go. Just forgot the comma here and this actually serves everything good. Now I'm just going to click on OK and let's just see what do we get. Um, I think I made the OF capital. F is supposed to be small. So I am just going to maybe call this as a lowercase. I think this is good. Say OK. And what do we get is nothing but the leave count of that particular employee. So let's just go take a look. Employee 246 leaves uh, 2, 15, and 13. So employees 2 is 2. Uh, and then after that was 15, which is right here, and 13, which is right here. Now, for this particular example, it was certainly maybe one or two steps ahead, but we don't really have to write any merges uh, that you otherwise have to write, open up any column. All of the work that you actually do happens in a single column without any sort of merges. Now, this is very, very good, especially if you're trying to apply VLOOKUPs on a dimension table, trying to expand a couple of columns. All right, that was all about quick and easy lookups in Power Query, which involves a bit of M code, but uh, there is no need of writing any merge between the two tables that you otherwise have to write. Now, this is especially good if you're trying to enhance your lookup tables by some broken data, for which especially you have to add the column as a table inside of the data and then apply a merge. You can easily do that using these particular techniques. Let me know how did you find it and if you're going to use it. Uh, if you have any questions around these, please feel free to put them down in the comments and I'll be glad to reply. Thanks so much for watching this. And in the end, a quick shout out about my DAX and my Power Query courses. If you're starting out with Power BI and you need help building your fundamentals first in Power Query or with DAX, learning the basics first and then moving on to solving more complex, more challenging problems, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be highly beneficial. Thanks so much for watching this and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye.